The beach is Andy Coutanche's canvas. Born here on the island of Jersey, he knows every cove. His only paintbrush is his great-grandfather's old rake. It all depends on what's on the beach, how the beach is, who's been on the beach, as for example, as well, the rocks, different things like that. But there'll be a sort of loose set idea, a loose pattern and such, or a loose plan. It takes him hours to complete a work. And often, the tide rolls in and erases it before it's done. It's always going to happen. That, I think that's the beauty of it, almost, you know, that it is sort of fleeting. You know? It's there and then it's gone. It's a free bit of public art. It's great. You know? This time, the tide rises even before Andy can take his customary photo. I get a great deal of satisfaction out of it, you know, and it's, you know, it's something creative and it's different each time, as I say. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that people do just for, you know, the sheer hell of it as such. You know? So I think this is as good as anything. You know? Gets me out, keeps me reasonably fit, gets me in great locations, so it's, it's good, you know. It's ephemeral art that lives on only in photos. Andy Coutanche has made a name for himself by creating sand pictures all over the world. Two years ago, he organized an international sand art competition on Jersey. But Andy hasn't always been an artist. He started out as a carpenter. A few years back in New Zealand, I was, my brother lives there, and I was building a, um, we were building a small sailing yacht, which had a retractable keel on it. And uh, we were drawing designs for the keel. I was walking his dog on the beach, basically, and just marking it out with a stick on the beach. And then when we walked back, it's kind of like, oh, look, some of those look, you know, started doing bigger patterns and it just sort of grew from that, really, you know. Meanwhile, he's branched out beyond sand art. In a tunnel, the Germans built to store munitions on Jersey when they occupied the island in World War II, and he has found the perfect site for his new passion, light art. Using a very long exposure, he photographs himself moving light sources in the dark tunnel. It was just something to do in the dark evenings when I couldn't do the sand art on the beach as such, so kind of got into it by accident almost a little bit, and then it's kind of sort of progressed from that, but yeah, it's, it is quite addictive, I must confess. You know, once you've done one and you think, right, okay, I'll plan that out, I'll do that better next time. And he doesn't know what the work will look like until it's finished. He posts photos of his art on his own website. As with his sand art, what fascinates him most about light art is the process of creating it. He sees it as a kind of meditation. He's just doing it from his mind and it's, it's so, you know, so artistic, isn't it? I would, uh go and set my foot in the wrong place and <laughs> make a mess of it if it was me. <laughs> After two hours, the work is finished. Now it's time to document it before the tide washes it out to sea. Fits in the area quite nicely. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the sand's quite soft at the top here, so you tend to get a lot more footprints. But aside from that, yeah, quite happy with that. Yeah. The beach is Andy's open-air studio, and now he's begun staging his light art in the open as well. It's quite good because you can do stuff in different parts of the island where it's quiet, you know, you, and it's, there's nobody else about. So it gives you a little bit of solitude and you can enjoy that as much as anything else about Jersey, I think, you know. It's not all about busy beaches and stuff like that, you know. There are quiet spots and it's great. Beach Art by Andy Coutanche. Exquisite creations that last but a moment. <laughs>